This is Ranger Meg with Tennessee State Parks. Thanks for tuning in today to this short backyard botany video program. We're going to explore some fascinating facts about common plants. Often visitors are interested in learning about the rare or unique species of plants protected in parks. And we're lucky to have some really cool plants. But I think maybe we fail to consider the interesting plants that we can find every day all around us. Those common plants. I hope this video will inspire you to stop and take a look around and discover that there can be a wealth of botanical beauty in your own backyard. So, these days, it seems like a lot of people are worried about running out of toilet paper, but there's no need for you to worry if you can find this common plant nearby. Look, it's got large, flexible leaves. Feel, it's so soft just like Charmin. In fact, one of the earlier names for this plant was actually rag paper. It's also been called felt wart, flannel leaf, rabbit's ears, blanket herb, woolen, all relating back to how amazingly soft it is. Its most commonly used common name is common mullen, and it is a common plant. Um, partly because it grows so easily in disturbed areas, so roadsides, um, old pastures, railroad beds, those sort of places. Um, however, even though it's common in the United States, it's actually not native to the United States. It was introduced here in the 1700s by European settlers, um, and it's actually native to the Mediterranean. Um, but let's get back to these soft hairs. I'm going to get close again. Take a look, the leaves are covered with these little tiny downy-like soft hairs on both sides of the leaf. That's what makes mullen so soft. Um, but why do you think that's beneficial to the plant to be covered like this in all these soft fuzzy hairs? Well think about it. If an animal came by looking for something tasty to eat, can the plant just get up and run away? No, so this is kind of like a defense mechanism for the plant um, to discourage animals from eating it because they wouldn't want that irritating, fuzzy feeling in their mouth. But all these little soft hairs actually make mullen a very useful plant for humans um, and not just for toilet paper. Something I read about was taking these big, wide, soft, fuzzy leaves and putting them in the bottom of your shoe as a shoe insert to help keep your feet warm. Also, people would take these fuzzy leaves and dip them in candle wax and use them for candle wicks. Um, the first year growth of common mullen is the pattern that we see here, and it's what botanists call a basal rosette. Um, all that means is it means it's growing low to the ground, and it's got this spiral pattern where the leaves spiral outward to just so they can get as much sun as possible. In its second year of growth, Mullen's going to put out this long, tall, rigid stalk. And that stalk's also going to be covered with all these fine, fuzzy hairs. Um, that was useful for humans as well because they would take that stalk, dip it in animal grease um, or candle wax, and then light it and use it as a torch or a candle. So some other older common names for Mullen also include torchweed, taper, candle flower, candle wick. Um, kind of interesting stuff, but looking back at the old names. At the top of that tall, rigid stalk is where mullen's going to flower. And usually the flowers are small and yellow. Um, they tend to bloom between June and September. Something fascinating about mullen is that after the plant has flowered and gone to seed, Native Americans used to take the seed grind it up into a powder and then sprinkle it over a stream or a waterway, it would paralyze the fish and bring them floating up to the surface so it made them easier to catch and gather for food. Um, other folk uses of mullen include herbal remedies for things like coughs, bronchitis, asthma, lung ailments, and that's why another old name for this plant was actually lungwort. Um, now, I, I don't recommend that you go out and collect some mullen and try it as a lung remedy or a cough syrup without first talking to your doctor. You might want to find some nearby 
just in case you run out of TP. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this backyard botany video, and I hope you've learned a little bit more about some common plants. While you're still online, you might want to do a Google image search. You could look for related species, see these plants in bloom, other growth patterns, or other habitats. Better yet, why don't you get outside and explore nature for yourself? You could visit your local Tennessee State Park, or maybe you could just step outside your back door. Either way, don't forget to stop and notice the everyday wonders of our natural world that are all around us, including some special common plants.